Hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to the gardens at Wapakoneta. We're visiting with Debbie McElroy. She is the ex executive director. And Debbie, first of all, tell us what your responsibilities are, and then we'll start talking about what the gardens are all about. Well, my general responsibilities are the overseeing of the building and the staff, which is a pretty easy job to do because it pretty much runs itself after all these many years. Tell us what the gardens at Wapakoneta are. We are a standalone assisted living facility. We are the only one in this area. Um, our company has 16 nursing homes, but we are the only detached assisted living facility. Now, what do you mean by detached? Well, the other facilities have nursing homes. So um, if you live in an assisted living facility there, then if you become more ill or need skilled care, you would go to their nursing home. Our facility offers um, a limited skilled care. So we do end of life care here where you can be on hospice. You can have wound care in this facility. Um, if you need IV therapy, we just call home health and any home health agency comes in and runs our IVs for us. Well, one question I want to ask because it's been asked uh, about the health care uh, facilities in, in the healthcare field for several years now. If you come here, can you keep your doctor if you like your doctor? Absolutely. The key to this facility, this home, is the fact that each person comes in with their own doctor. So we can deal up to 40, doct 40 different doctors, um, cardiologists, neurologists, um, endocrinologists, plus your own home doctor, as well as your own pharmacy. Um, most facilities have their own facility, their own facility pharmacy that comes in, and then they take, have to take their medications and use their doctor. Our building has your choices. It's all about choices here. Well, we are here because of a new wing that has been added, but tell us a little bit about the history of the, the facility, when it was first built, and, and a little bit of that. Okay. In 1999, uh, Mr. Ralph Hazelbaker, who is the owner of this building, who resides in Florida, had a vision that Wapakoneta needed assisted living. Mr. Hazelbaker um, builds these homes all over. And we were lucky enough to be one of those. He, he found that um, people didn't always need to leave their home and then go to a nursing home immediately. That is not always the case. The, uh, the case. Nursing homes have a big role in this community, absolutely. But assisted living is that halfway point that we meet those needs from home to intermediate care. So you don't have to be extremely ill to come here. We have people that move in just because they're lonely and they don't want to live alone anymore and they don't want to, they say, burden their children. Um, I find that the children don't find their parents as burdensome at all. But um, they're very strong, a lot of strong Germans here and they have their own desires and their own needs and their own wants, and we meet them every day where they're at and what they want. Well, Debbie, I'm curious, uh, how far or what would be the geography of the residents that uh, want to come here? Uh, I'm sure that there are uh, some people that uh, might be from the city, but like that country kind of feel that Wapakoneta might have, it's a, 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 a nice change, possibly. How far away do your residents come from? The furthest we've had that I can recall is Dayton. She moved here to be with her son, and that has worked out very well. We have um, a large farming, it was uh, Mr. and Mrs. came here from Jackson Center, had a very large farm. And um, they resided in a suite for several months together. Um, the mister did pass rather quickly. She stayed here for many years after, thrived, had friends, and she was a blessing to us and her family. We're very supportive. We have most everyone that lives here has family that is supportive. Their children, nieces and nephews, grandchildren. So that's the demographics. But, but a lot of it's WAPOC. 
Well, I know that relationships uh, help anyone have a, a better lifestyle if you have positive relationships. And I think sometimes people think you come to a, a retirement facility or an assisted care facility and you're and you just dispelled that, but do you, you get people that want to come and have friends come in in addition to family and uh, I'm, I'm sort of asking the question, sometimes does it get to be a little bit of a party? It's a party almost every day. We have happy hour at least once a month and we have community bingo and card parties. Um, Brenda Mextroth is our activities director and last night she had the sheriff's department bring in the canine and we all went outside from wheelchairs to walkers to people who can just walk on their own to their families. And they came. Um, we have live music a lot. Um, we have clubs that meet here. So um, anybody can come to those meetings and those clubs and enjoy the, the food and the entertainment. And family comes all the time. Friends from Dayton are coming to see the one lady and they play cards. Debbie, what kind of resources are needed for those residents to stay here? Well, we are a private pay facility. So everyone that lives here has to have the resource as far as financials to reside here. We do take the Medicaid waiver program. The Medicaid waiver is a separate entity from the, the Medicaid program. On the Medicaid waiver, they do have to have some uh, financial responsibility, so it's not free. It's never free to live here, but um, we welcome the program. It keeps people that have spent all their money in their home with the same care and the same love that they had when they private paid. Um, we try to be very respectful of that. That being said means I don't... Um, we're very careful about where we order medicines. If the family wants us to use um, Schwedermann's or, or mail order or CVS or whatever pharmacy, we'll do that. And a lot of times they've already checked to see where can we get the medications the cheapest. Well, we live in a world now where transportation draws us closer all the time. Do you have uh, certain programs that you have worked out with uh, area hospitals and those hospitals that may not be fairly close but reasonably close? What we do for transportation here is Council on Aging is a, um, a large part of our life. So the, the folks, we, we make the appointments with the doctor, then we call Council on Aging if the family doesn't want to drive. However, most of our families are highly involved. So if mom or dad needs to go or aunt or uncle, you'll see them loading them up and driving them. If they can't, we call Council on Aging. They come. If the family wants to ride along, they can or they can meet them there. If that doesn't work, we do have our own van. Now, when someone is thinking about coming to the gardens at Wapakoneta, is there a kind of a history, a physical history done for them prior to them being accepted? Absolutely. The history and physical has to be done 30 days. It can only be 30 days old. So if you want to move in um, in a week, well, that's all well and good if the doctor has seen you. If not, we'll have to get that appointment set up. And they'll give us a history and physical, a medication list. Um, if you need a wheelchair, walker, a special diet, we have Pureed, Mechanical Soft, Diabetic, Heart Healthy. Um, all those diets have to be listed as well. Um, oxygen, we, we handle oxygen, and that comes from whatever company you want to use, too, um, for that purpose. Some are on continuous, some are on intermittent. But um, those all are addressed during the history and physical. Okay, I'm, I'm sort of curious, too. I'm a nosy person, if you haven't noticed. I... Uh, I wonder when you decided to add the new wing, was that just because you, you were bursting at the seams? You wanted to uh, uh, be able to manage more people, have more residents here, or was that other reasons come into play? The main reason was we had people on our wait list, and we had some that 
ended up going to other facilities that they didn't want to go to, whether it was here in town or out of town. Uh, we can house 46 individuals in the front part of the building. And some have capacity for um, couples. However, if that, that didn't always happen. So we had 46 living up there and turning people away. So that problem was addressed um, with my corporation and Mr. Dowerman, who is the company CEO. And then he went to Mr. Hazelbaker, and he explained the issue. And Mr. Hazelbaker said, well, maybe it's time that we look at adding on. So I didn't think it was going to be quite 15,000 square feet, but it is, and it's beautiful. And each room has capacity for two adults, and nine have patios. Well, with that 15,000 feet, uh, did you get most of the wishes on your wish list? I got more than my wishes on the wish list. I wasn't wishing for patio rooms, and I was very surprised that we got them, and it was very kind of them to throw that into the package as well. Um, a beautiful dining room set that is, um, we're utilizing. We have a warming kitchen. The main kitchen was expanded along with the beauty shop up front in the old wing, and so... It's hard to transport eggs and pancakes and those delicate foods without them becoming cold. So here we use the warming station, the new warming station, and so and they have the capacity to use the griddle back here, so those things will be made fresh for those folks back here. Well, what's been the response for the the residents in the new in their new digs back here, so to speak? They're anxious. They keep asking me, can, are we going to be able to go back and look at it soon? Of course, the main thing is how much does it cost? When can I, can, when I, can I move in? What are you going to do about staffing? And, you know, the, the general questions that you would have if you were going to come and live anywhere is who's going to be taking care of me and how are you going to make sure that I'm well and healthy? And each room has pull cords, which will announce to the nurse that you need assistance. As time goes and there's more people that live here with more health problems and they're in this wing, of course, we'll have to have more staffing. Staffing is based on um, PPDs, which means how many people and what level of care. So the, more, the higher care you have if you're level four, which means we're doing everything for you, lifting, dressing, bathing, feeding, everything, um, that calls for more staff and intensive, more intensive care, so that would require more staff back here. We strive to have the highest level of people work here that we can find. Um, longevity is key to that. New help is wonderful, but when you are looking for consistent quality of care with high standards, you have to keep your staff. That's that's the key. Connie Brinsfield has been here since the building opened in 1999, September of 1999, actually. And she is our director of nursing. Connie worked the floor along with me for years. I was an RN um, part-time for many years. Then I became the director of nursing, and then the director of nursing as well as the administrator here. Um, when that became too much back in December... Connie stepped up, took the DON job. She also has staff under her that have been here for 10 years um, as nurses. We have Jenny Wackoff here that has been with us almost 16 years. She came as a child, actually, because she's only in her 30s. But she is our head nursing assistant. And um, you, just can't beat, you just can't beat longevity. Um, Jenny also has working with her, um, under her, some staff that have been here six, eight, nine years, and they know what the folks want almost before they know what they want. That, in, that includes the kitchen staff as well as housekeeping and maintenance. So you, I just don't think you can beat the staff that we have at the gardens. Well, what you're telling us is that most of the staff and the residents know each other on a first-name basis. 
Absolutely. We're family. And that's when I write anything to the folks, it's family taking care of family. I went to school with most of these people's children. And we, it's, it's huge to me that they trust me to take care of their mom or dad. And because you can't be friends with someone that we graduated in 1971 from Wapak High, and then they bring their family in here, and I would take care of them like they were my own parents because I love them, and I love this building, and I love Wapakoneta. So it's, it's truly an honor to serve. Debbie, with your nursing background, I suppose it's a, a very important desire of yours to make sure that the care itself is, is uppermost and, and uh, the best it possibly can be. Absolutely. Um, I was just talking to Connie yesterday about charts. And as a registered nurse I, for 33 years, um, I, much to her chagrin, I think, I'm into everything. I am um, in the charts. I'm checking nurses' notes. I'm at the folks making sure that their diets are followed. Um, I am with housekeeping, and we, we scrub floors together. We serve food together. We, um, I do laundry. Um, and the reason that we do all those tasks together is to make sure that everything is functioning to its highest expectations. The folks um, at home would have done all this for themselves. So when you're dealing with wives, mothers, and husbands, and dads, they had their own way of doing things. My wish is that we carry on the way they did things here. So if someone wants their laundry done a certain way, we try to honor that and not throw them wrinkled clothes into their, their closets. Um, when it comes to the medications, we have to go through the charts and make sure that all the blood draws are being done. Doctors are very, very busy. And sometimes they just can't remember everything. That's part of a nurse's job is to help the doctor. So we oversee the charts by going through them and making sure that everything is done to their expectations. And if they haven't thought of something, I can throw it out there. And if it's not their desire, they'll let me know. Well, you know, Wapakoneta, like much of Ohio, is an agricultural community. And farmers tend to be a little more independent at times, I think, and, and maybe as they uh, uh, age in, in life. Uh, have you have a, had a history with uh, farm families uh, coming here and utilizing the services? A lot, of, a lot of farmers. I did explain that our one family was the husband and wife from Jackson Center who had a very large farm. And even after his mom and dad had passed, he still came. He still came and visited us. He put puzzles together here with the folks. He stopped and he talks to people that he remembers. It was real hard for him not to come around, um, and he is also farming. So, yes, a very large farming community, a um, lot of Germans. And, but we, have the, we also have the city folks that live here as well, and that's a good mix. Uh, one year, we had them bring in the reindeer from a, a local farm that's here, and they brought the reindeer in. So you can just see their eyes sparkle when that happens. Well, Debbie, this is a fascinating and a, a new wing to have uh, more residents here at the gardens at Wapakoneta. Tell us a little bit about how those that are watching right now would get more information, may possibly want to volunteer and, and get more involved, or just have general questions about the possible idea that they might want to come here in the future. Every staff member is trained to do tours. Tours can be done at any time of the day. You don't have to make appointments. All staff members are capable. They'll take you from room to room. They'll show you the empty rooms that we have. We have a model room set up in this area that they can come in and look at. 
Uh, the tour includes from the formal dining room in the front, and we go clear through the whole building, including looking into the kitchen, the med room, the jacuzzi, everything. I, I even show them the laundry rooms. I think it's imperative that they see the hygiene that we have throughout the building. Uh, we have pamphlets, and we have a great website, and, and, you, and we're on Facebook. I try to keep up with that the best that I know how. And if I run into trouble, I ask the young girls. They're very capable. Well, Debbie, if folks would like to get a little bit more information, might possibly want to volunteer or find out more for themselves or their families, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the website is thegardenswapakoneta.com, and if you get on there... It's going to tell you all the information almost better than what I have, I'm, I hope. Well, you've done an excellent job, and we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you for having me.